So the first thing I want you to do is tell me what you notice about that upper left corner of your paper. We've got these similar polygons, these similar triangles, and I want you to tell me what you notice about them. One's bigger. We have a dilation. I love it. One's bigger. One's a dilation. You're using your vocabulary from geometry. What else do you notice? There's more things than just one's bigger than the other. What else do you notice? Translation, maybe. Uh, right, they're both right triangles. Therefore, they both have hypotenuse. What else do we notice? They're triangles. When you said dilation, that meant that the angle measures have to be the same, but the side lengths have to be different. Of great stuff going on there, okay? So let's uh, let's elaborate on that. Triangle ABC is what we call similar, not congruent, but similar to triangle DEF, and we have a new symbol. I think we may have seen it last year, but we didn't use it a whole lot. That new symbol is just a tilde, no equal to below it. Okay, just a squiggly with no equal sign. So it's not congruent, it's similar. Okay, so make a mo mark, pay attention, star beside it, something to, to make yourself aware that there's a new symbol out there and we got to know it. Okay, so triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. And just like when we wrote our congruent statements before, we're going to have congruent statements now with angles only but not with sides. So if triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF, angle A has to be congruent to which angle? Angle D, because they're listed first. So angle A is congruent to angle D. Angle B is congruent to angle E. And angle C has to be congruent to angle F because they're both right angles. Corresponding angles are congruent or the same. But the sides certainly aren't the same measures. Okay, they're slightly different. The sides are going to be, all right, this looks like something we did yesterday, doesn't it? What did we call it when we had a fraction equals a fraction? Start with a P. Proportional. Corresponding sides are proportional. So the distance between A and B at over the distance between D and E has to be the same, okay, A to B, A to B, this distance over this distance has to be the same as the distance between B and C over the distance between E and F has to be the same as the distance between A and C. Oops, I didn't do that one right. A and B over DE. Okay. 
got that one to begin with. Blue is to blue, as red is to red, as green is to green. Okay. So you may not be able to see it from where you're sitting, but Dalton, how long is the distance between A and B? Oops, that one's a hard one. Let's skip that one for the moment. Let's go with B to C first. Careful, count it one more time. Good. B to C is 3. Okay. E and F is what, Dimitri? What's the distance between E and F? Nine. All right. And Alexandra, what's the distance between A and C? Two. And what's the distance between D and F, Natalie? Six. Now let's do the hard ones. Okay. Now we have to find the distance between A and B and the distance between B and E. Okay. So when we look at A to B, this is diagonal. We don't get to count this one, right? But you told me a little bit ago this is a right triangle. How can we find the hypotenuse of a right triangle if we know two of the sides? How can we find that length? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Or we could use the distance formula, right? But since we already know these two, let's use the easier one. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A is the 3, actually. This is taking too long to write it out. Okay. So what's a squared? Brendan, what's a squared? And Samantha, what's b squared? What's b squared? b squared is? Two times two is? Four. Sorry, I didn't hear you. My fault. And c squared is what, uh, Milo? We don't know yet, right? But what is 9 plus 4? 13. So if 13 is c squared, what does c have to be? Something, a decimal, right? Because when we take the square root of both sides, c becomes the square root of 13, which was about 6 point what? Or no, not 6. What times itself gets us 13? 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16. So something between 3 and 4. 3.6. Isn't it? So absolutely. So this comes from dilation. Absolutely. But we want to take it one step further. Okay? Not just taking everybody by this times the same number to get the new guy, but to be able to figure out what those things would be. So this is probably the one thing that is used the most in all of geometry. I'm 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 being very generous with this. But Think about how many times that you have architectural blueprint, blueprints and or drawings or something of that nature and you want to scale it up, right? So if on my, on my framework or if on, on my blueprint this is three inches on my blueprint and then it has to be nine feet in real life, does that make sense? We use similarity all the time in real world, especially in construction, engineering. Okay? So that one's the square root of 13. Okay, let's check this one out. We said that the distance between E and F was 9, and the distance between D and F was 6. What is 9 squared, Allie? And what is 6 squared, Peyton? So 81 plus 36, 
117. So if 117 equals c squared, then we take the square root and c is the square root of 117. So we've got the square root of 117 and the square root of 13. Now let's check and see what happens. Remember yesterday what we did here to verify that all three of them are the same? Yeah, we can cross multiply and see if we get the same result. Or we can divide. Nine, 3 divided by 9 is 0.3 repeating. 2 divided by 6 is 0.3 repeating, right? And if we take the square root of 13 divided by the square root of 117, 0.3 repeating. So we knew that because these are similar triangles, but we should get that same, same result when we divide all three of them out. Okay? So our scale factor. And when we say scale factor, I'll take two answers. That doesn't matter to me which way you give it to me. But when we say scale factor, you can simply reduce your fraction. What would 2 sixths or 3 ninths be as a reduced fraction? One third. One third is the same thing as saying one to three, isn't it? Okay. And on a map or a blueprint, when we want to show the scale factor, we write it with a colon in between. It's a one to three scale factor. But if you write it in ratio or fraction form, that's okay too. I would take either answer. Just make sure you reduce it. Does that make sense? Okay. When you look at a scale factor on a map, it'll say one inch to three yards or something like that. Okay, it'll have something that looks like this. Okay, questions on this one? All right, here comes the next piece then. So one can ask us to write the proportions for the sides, tell me the angles that are congruent, right? and verify that they're congruent or that they're, they have the same scale factor. But then we can also say, hey, here is a pair of polygons, and I want you to decide if they are similar or not. Okay, Are they similar? Is PQ, the distance between P and Q, let me do it over here, over R, um, AB, Notice how these are just a dilation and translated over, right? So is 4.5 over 3 the same as 7.5 over 5? Is that the same as 6 over 4? And is that the same as 10.61 over 7.07. .07. How do we check? It's a lot of work. But there's only going to be six questions on your assignment today. It's in the book. Six, six problems in the book. So when we divide this out, what do we get? 1.5. We divide 7.5 by 4. 1.5, 6 divided by 4. Um, the 6 and the 4 are these two, the QR and the BC. Okay? And then finally, 10.61 divided by 7.07. .07. Yeah, I had to round it a little bit in my drawing, so I stopped at two decimal places, but these are all, for the most part, 1.5. Absolutely. Divide top by bottom, see what you get for a decimal. Compare it to the next one, compare it to the next one, compare it to the next one. If you get the same number all the way, we know they're proportional. Okay? If we don't, then we say not similar. Yep. Not too bad, right? Okay, so are they similar? Yes. Okay? Next question then. What is the scale factor from the big one to the small one? So pick the easiest one to reduce. When we reduce 6 fourths, what would we get? 3 halves, 
So what's our scale factor from the biggest one to the smallest one? Three, two, two. Thank you. You could write it as three halves as a ratio instead. I would take that as an answer. Okay. What's the scale factor of the small one to the large one? Two to three. Okay. So all we did was we said if we're going from small to large, then we need to say little, little number to big number. But if we want the big to the small, we do big number first and small. So the first one's asking for large, large um, quadrilateral to small. The second one wants to say what's it going to be small to large. Okay? Make sense? Questions on this? All right, let's keep moving. So now they tell us, guess what? These two triangles are similar. Can you tell me what X and Y are going to be? Okay, the two, the two triangles are similar. Find X, find Y. So ABC is similar to PQR. That means that AB corresponds to or is proportional to PQ as BC is to QR or RQ as AC is to PR. So let's write our proportions. Q, give me one proportion. Are we going big to small or small to big? Big to small. So we have to make sure that we always go to the big triangle first. All right, so what's one proportion going to be? X over 10. Very good. Because X and 10 are the corresponding sides of those two triangles. J, what's another one that we're going to use? So what's, what, what, if we're going big to small and we've already used X, tell me which one you want to use next. 20. 20 goes with Y. So 20 is to Y. And our last pair, Sam. Good. As long as you visit that large triangle first instead of the small triangle, then we're in good shape. We're getting the proportion set up properly. You start with big to small. You have to be consistent and always do big to small. Does that make sense? Now, why did I skip things? Okay, let me show you a, a, the method to my madness. Does it help us to have X and Y close together? Maybe. We just have more writing to do. Because how do we solve something like this? Just looking at the first two proportion or first two fractions, what, we, what, what would we solve that as? How would we do it? Butterfly method, right? You guys heard of that? We're going to cross multiply. We did it yesterday. Okay. So when we do this diagonal, we get 9x equals 10 times 22.5. Make sense? So 9x equals 225. When we move our decimal place one place over. How do we solve that for x? Divide by 9. So when we divide by 9, what's 225 divided by 9? Nine goes into 22 two times. Subtract 18. Nine goes into 18 or goes into 45 five times. So x is 25. Now we have to find y. Okay. With y, because I wrote these with the parts that we knew in the middle, no variables here. Now we can reuse this. We're going to take 9 times 20 and 22.5 times y. What's 9 times 20? 
So 180 will have to be divided by 22.5, right? And what do we get? So y equals 8. What questions do you have on this one? Okay, none? Good idea to put the one that you know in the middle so you can reuse it or rewrite. It doesn't matter. Okay, but we don't want x and y in the same equation. All right, last couple things here. Okay, so now we're going to talk about perimeter real quick. Suddenly they throw perimeter in here. What is perimeter? The distance around a figure, okay? So we've got triangles up there, right? Okay, we have triangles up there. We want to know the distance around those triangles. Can we find the distance around the smaller triangle? Yeah, what kind of triangle is that? It's acute. And what's another word for it? Isosceles. Why is it isosceles and not equilateral? Only two sides, right? Only two sides are equal. So if I want to know the distance around this guy, and I know that these two triangles are similar, there's that new symbol for us, how could I find the distance around the big triangle? Not add three because they're not going to be they're going to be proportional, not sum. So let's set up our proportions, right? We need to know what x is. So are we going big to small or small to big? Small to big. Let's go small to big this time to show that it still works. Okay. So which part do we know on the small triangle? Triangle. Well, which part? Which fraction do we know? 6 to 9, right? So 6 to 9, 6 is to 9 as 5 is to x. All right, let's cross multiply. What's 9 times 5? And how do we solve for x? So 45 divided by 6 is 7.5. So we know that this one is 7.5, and guess what? PQ also has to be, right? Okay, so now could we figure out the distance around that triangle? What's 7.5 plus 7.5? Yep, 15, right? Plus 9 is 24. Distance around perimeter. Okay, last example. Okay, we have two polygons that are similar, and when they're similar, their other parts will also be similar. In this case, we have two triangles, and we have a new feature that we added from the vertex to the base perpendicular is something called an. Do you know this term? Starts with an A. It's an altitude. You guys have heard of altitude, right? Okay. So this altitude is going to be proportional to this altitude, just as the sides are proportional to each other. Okay. So are we doing big to little or little to big? Big to little. Okay. Left to right. That means that we know the 18, right? So 18 is to 10 as x is to 8. Okay? Cross multiply and solve. Okay? Questions on this one? We're good? All right. Assignment. It's just six problems. Just six problems. You should be able to get it done in class. And I have a little mini quiz, but we're going to take before we leave.